Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to our APO review. Sorry for any problems last night. We're still working out the kinks with this, and hopefully we can make it a little more fluid tonight, and there won't be any interruptions. So let's hop right in. Tonight we're going to be going over the Protestant Reformation, the Catholic and Counter-Reformation, and Wars of Religion. Now, this time period was around 1517 to 1648. So with the Protestant Reformation, it basically marks the beginning of modern Europe, and it kind of influenced the development of the of Western civilization. What began as an attempt to reform the Roman Catholic Church ended up resulting in the destruction of the unity of Western Europe, and then there were just a ton of wars of religion. So... Protestantism was adopted by the growing nation-states of the North as Italy and Spain wanted to replace leaders of modern Europe in that era. Protestantism adapted the concept of individuality from the Renaissance and it influenced a lot of developments in Western civilization such as uh, nationalism and capitalism, democracy, and science. So, in response to the Reformation, the Catholic in church started a lot of counter-reformations against it, and they basically criticized the reforms, and they tried to stop the spread of Protestantism. Uh, an important document was the Council of Trent, which redefined the doctrines of the church, and basically, once again, tried to stop Protestantism in expand the power of the church so some more counter reformations were the inquisition in spain which um tried to unite spain based on the catholic tradition and then the muslim moors and the jews in spanish society were they were either killed or driven into exile or tortured to death. The Inquisition in Spain later tried to combat Protestantism, like the counter-reformations of the church, and then it fled to Italy and most of Northern Europe in the 16th and 17th century. So now I'm going to go over some causes of the Reformation. One really main cause was what was wrong with the church. So basically, at the time, it was very corrupt during the Renaissance era, and the church also was criticized for the selling of indulgences, which was basically, they said that you could buy your way into heaven, which was complete nonsense. And a lot of people just believed it and went with it, but it then later got criticized by Martin Luther. Another main cause of the Reformation was humanism, which spread during the Renaissance, and it questioned the church traditions, and it really focused on the human aspect of life, and it kind of contradicted the church's emphasis on salvation. Um... Another reason would be the declining prestige of the papacy. Popes, basically, who lived in Rome, they, there were two of them actually in 1378. One lived in Rome and the other in Avignon, and this caused a lot of tension and problems, which this lasted for 48 years, which later led to the Great Schism. Another reason for the Reformation is the influence of religious reformers such as Wycliffe. And they they talked about a personal communication with God and it diminished the importance of the sacraments and this also weakened the influence of the clergy. 
Um, there's some other minor reasons, but those are the big ones. Some important people are going to be Joanne Tetzel and Martin Luther. Uh, Tetzel was a friar who was authorized by Pope Leo to sell indulgences. And this later was used to rebuild St. Peter's Church in Rome and it provided funds to the local diocese. Martin Luther, on their hand, he was a Roman Catholic priest and then later a monk. He went against a lot of things that the church did, including the selling of indulgences, which later resulted in him making the 95 Theses, which basically criticized the church and all of his oppositions to it, and it invited to debate. So, from the time period of 1519 and 1520, appeals were made to Pope Leo the tenth at the time for reform, and he didn't do anything about it, so Luther, he gained support and his beliefs, and he got a lot of followers. He eventually got his own group, the Lutherans, and basically their main principles are salvation by faith alone, and the Bible is the ultimate authority over the Pope and Church. They also believe that the grace of God will bring absolutism, which, absolution, my bad, my, um, which went against the selling of indulgences, and that you can't buy your way into heaven. The Lutherans also believe that baptism and communion are the only valid sacraments, which went also against the Roman Catholic Church because they believed in seven. Luther rejected all of them except uh, baptism and communion. Uh, another thing that the Lutherans rejected was transubstantiation, that the Bread and wine were Jesus's body and blood. Um, not that important. Some other beliefs the Lutheran shared was that the clergy is not superior to the laity, and that um, Christianity is a priesthood of all believers, and monasticism should be abolished. Um, excuse us for a second. We have a caller. Hello. Uh, we're live right now. Oh boy. I was just going over the beliefs of the Lutherans. Okay, you can continue with that. So, in 1520, right around this period, Luther actually burned the papal bull, which was an official proclamation that demanded his actions, which was also founded by the Lutherans, and he actually excommunicated Pope Leo X, who was the Pope at the time. So, um, the Roman Emperor at the time was Charles V, and, of course, instead of arresting Luther and trying to get rid of Lutherism, he, he actually befriended Luther, and since there was a growing appeal in Germany, he, he wanted to have a political debate to Frederick the Wise, and he didn't want to outlaw Lutherism without a hearing. So later, in 1521... Luther was called to the Rhineland in Germany to appear before the Diet of Worms, which was a trial of the Holy Roman Empire against to condemn Lutherism. So this was basically the best theological debaters at the time who stood for the Roman Catholic Church against Luther. So Luther kind of didn't do good in this. He, um, the Empire ended up outlawing him, and he was excommunicated from the country. But Frederick the Wise actually took him in, and he organized his Reformed Church and translated the Bible into common vernacular, which spread Lutherism again, and it influenced the development of the modern German language. So... Later in that time period, Lutherism began to spread, and war was still going on with the Ottoman Turks and the French. So Charles V, who was still the Holy Roman Empire at the time, wanted to suppress the growth of Protestantism in Northern Europe. 
1522, a League of Lutheran Knights, they attacked Catholic priests at, around the Rhineland and basically waged war with them, which wasn't their best idea. So now in between the periods of 1524 and 1526, Luther demanded more theological and religious sects to form, and he still wanted reform on the church. So, with his followers and um, his religion, he eventually started the Peasants' War in Germany. So, an important thing to know right now is that Luther did not want the war. These were so-called extremists, and Luther was actually appalled by them, who took his ideas too far. Um, a subsection of the Protestants were the Anabaptists and the Millenarians, who, who just attacked anything that happened to do with the Roman Catholic Church. And they, um, and they thought that Christ was going to come back. They were a little crazy. Luther, again, did not like them. He actually called them, quote, filthy swine, and he encouraged the princes to exterminate them. So this radical revolt that was influenced by Luther and his followers had authority from the Bible and with uh, the ministers at the time. So Luther's social and economical conservatism actually helped the spread of Lutherism and started going to southern Germany and all other parts of Europe. In 1531, the League of Schmeckenhagen was formed by the new Protestant princes to defend themselves against the emperor. Charles appealed to the Pope to call a church council that could compromise with the Lutherans and regain their allegiance to the Roman Catholic Church. The Pope, fearing that the papacy was losing its power, refused, and basically lost all its opportunity to reunite with the Western Church. So now we're in the 1530s, this time period, and the Reformation is starting to spread to Germany. In um, Switzerland, Zwingli, um, he established Protestantism in Switzerland, and it started a nationwide religious civil war. Now, although most of his followers accepted, accepted most of Luther's reforms, they argued that God's presence um, during communion is only symbolic. So then they signed the Peace of Capel in Switzerland, which allowed each Swiss canton, basically the city-states that were in Switzerland, to determine its own religion. Now fast forward to 1534, um, Pope Paul III is now the Pope, and he was the first pope that could be called a reform pope. He basically agreed with the Reformation in Luther and wanted to start the Reformation, kind of. So, in England during that time, Parliament passed the Act of Supremacy, which made Henry VIII the head of the Anglican Church. In 1521, when Luther was banned by the Empire, Henry had, was the defender of faith by Pope for his tract of the defense of the seven sacraments. But by 1529, Parliament, partly because of Henry's influence, declared the English Church to be independent from Rome. So this actually cut off revenue to, to the papacy, and Henry, who was eager to divorce the Catherine of Aragon, who was rumored to be very ugly in order to marry Anne Boylan, he was denied this annulment for political reasons. The church didn't want to do it, so Henry appointed Thomas Cranner as archbishop, which wasn't at all agreed with the church. And now... They caused a lot of tension with the church, which caused him to be excommuted by the Pope, which 
now things get a little more interesting that now Henry is starting his new empire separate from the papacy. Now, still in the 1530s, the English Parliament started to abolish Roman Catholic monasteries and confiscated their lands and redistributed them to the nobles. Back to Switzerland, uh, after Zwingli, John Calvin, who believed in his ideas and liked him, he published his book, The Institutes of the Christian Religion. In this book, he accepted most of Luther's ideas, but... He um, differed on some things, which is not that important. He basically just agreed that the church should have more power than Luther said and that it's higher than the state. So now in 1539 in England, Parliament approved the Statute of the Sixth Articles, and I'll go through these quickly. Um, they were the seven sacraments were upheld, um, Catholic theology was maintained against the tenets of both Lutherism and Calvinism. The authority of the monarch replaced the authority of the Pope. And, um, yeah, that's not that important either. So now we're in the 1540s and Calvinism is starting to spread after John Calvin um, started to get some followers and now they founded their own religion, the Calvinist religion. <laughs> Now, it actually, there were subsections of that too, just like the Protestant, there were the Scottish Calvinists, who they established a national church, and the French Calvinists, who were called the Huguenots. They made dramatic gains, but they were, um, they were suppressed by the Catholic majority in France, and then there were the English Calvinists, who were called the Puritans. They also failed in their revolution in the 1600s, but they were able to establish a new colony in New England. So during that time period, the 1540s, the Catholic and Counter-Reformations be started to begin. Um, Ignatius of Loyola, who was the founder of the Jesuit faith, shout out to Ignatius and other Jesuits, he started the Society of Jesus, which was a holy order that was uh, organized in a military fashion, and it required all of its members to have blind obedience and absolute faith. So the Jesuits actually wanted to suppress Protestantism, and they served as advisors to the Catholic kings. They also supported the Inquisition, and they established schools in Catholic nations to um, indoctrinate the young, basically get them to side with the church. They also sent missionaries to far corners of the earth to come get them to be um, Catholic. Um... So, later that year, the Jesuits were given control of the Spanish and the Italian Inquisition. So, as I mentioned before, the Inquisition suspected a lot of people of heresy and it tortured them and killed them. So, the Index of the Prohibited Books was instituted in Catholic countries and this banned a lot of radical material that... <laughs> Um, went against the church and it wanted to keep um, people faithful to the Roman Catholic Church running alongside the Catholic and Counter Reformations. In 1545, um, the Council of Trent um, responded to the challenge of Protestantism and it, um, it redefined the Catholic dogma. So, some main points about the Council of Trent was that it said that salvation is by both good works. And it works through faith. It also revalidated the all, the seven sacraments and transubstantiation was reaffirmed. Additionally, the sources of religion um, are from the Bible, the traditions are from the church, and the writings are from the church fathers. Individuals cannot interpret the Bible without the guidance of the church, and the only valid version of the Bible is the Vulgate, St. Jerome of Latavia's translation. Um, finally, it established monotism, which had the celibacy of the church, and it made the existence of purgatory also reaffirmed. So, fast forward a couple years to the 1555, when the Peace of Augsburg was um, created. 
So this was, so now 20 years have passed of religious tension. And so the Peace of Augsburg basically made the German princes able to choose their own religion, which finally came to an agreement with the Reformation. So, but with the choices, they could only pick between Lutherism and Catholicism, which angered some people as it showed that they could only pick between two religions. <laughs> so now, the result of this was that Northern Europe adopted Protestantism, um, Western Christianity was just ununited, it kind of fell apart, and religious wars are now breaking out over Europe for this last century. So, I'm going to quickly touch on the Thirty Years' War, and I think we can end it there. So, the Thirty Years' War was the first continent-wide war in modern history, and it was fought mostly in Germany, but it involved um, a lot of the major European powers. It was a culmination of the religious wars of the 16th century between Catholics and Protestants. Politically, German princes sought um, autonomy from the Holy Roman Empire, and France sought to limit the power of the Habsburgs, who sought to extend the Habsburgs' power in Germany. And then Sweden and Denmark hoped to strengthen their hold over the Baltic region. So, of course, the Thirty Years' War was 30 years from 1618 to 1648. So, just to end it on the Peace of Westphalia, this was basically a reinstatement of the Peace of Augsburg. But um, Calvinist was now an option of the religion they could pick. Then the Edict of Restitution was also made in the Peace of Westphalia. The Edict of Restitution was actually revoked and it guaranteed the possession of former church states to their Protestant holders. Switzerland and Holland were made independent states and they were freed from the Habsburgs' dominion. And then France, Sweden, and Brandenburg, which is now, which was later Prussia, received various territories. And then finally the Peace of Westphalia um, made German princes sovereign rulers and they limited the power of the holy roman empire and it and um it limited the influence of the austrian and spanish habsburgs so some effects of the 30 years war and i think we can call it a night so after all this religious war and the 30 years war specifically germany got absolutely devastated a lot of people died from it and actually a third was killed off which is insane so another um effect of these religious wars was that they were finally done and there was some peace within europe and this started the modern age of uh, sovereign states and the balance of power of politics came back into Europe. Another effect of these religious wars were the Habsburgs were weakened. They were a major ruling family in parts of Europe. They were the Austrian monarchy. Um, they also lost influence in Germany and it ended the possibility of a Europe united under the family. And then Habsburg in Spain weren't completely destroyed, but they were severely weakened, and they were left as a second-rate power. Also, the Catholic and Counter-Reformations were slowed. Protestantism was safely established in its uh, the places that it started in Europe, and then finally, the Holy Roman Empire ceased to be a viable political structure, and the Germanic stage would not be unified again until 1871. And then Calvinism gained acceptance throughout Protestant Europe. And then Anabaptism just disappeared because it wasn't that important. So that's the um, end of our review session. Tomorrow we're going to be doing the growth of European nation states. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this.
um, please support me on Patreon. These videos take a long time and a lot of um, money to make. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you all tomorrow at...